surfaces. What are these? Um, so you can think of a surface as a two-dimensional subset of R3 for our purposes here. Um, there are more formal definitions. There are other meanings of surface in other contexts, but at least in um, the context of a vector calculus, multivariable calculus course, this is how you want to think of a, a surface. So it's um, any two-dimensional subset of R3, right? So you have your x, y, and z axes, and we want <clears throat> something that's not just one-dimensional. That would be a curve, right? A curve is a is a one-dimensional subset of of R three. Um, a surface is, you know, you think of maybe taking infinitely many curves and stitching them together, and that would be a surface, right? So a surface is something that's two-dimensional. Um, so some you could think of it as something that would have area but not volume, right? Curves, one-dimensional objects have length. Um, a surface would have area, right? Uh, a solid would have volume. So it, it's so for example, if you said a um, one totally correct way to think of this is if you say the surface of the earth, right? Um, you don't mean the whole earth all filled in solid. That would be a solid, right? Um, and uh, so good, good word choice there, mathematical community, right? Um, as opposed to the surface of the earth is um, is just the the area all along the surface of the earth and not the filled in solid right so that's what we're talking about with with this word surface um how do we usually represent these we usually represent them by a graph right um of a function so represented most at least at this part of our adventure um represented often as a graph of a function right um as the graph this is a favorite way to represent surfaces graph of a uh, function which we'll call um, f, and f will be a function from the pairs of real numbers to real numbers, right? Which I usually will write with some formula um, where we'll say, you know, the pairs of real numbers that we're using for the domain for inputs, we'll call those x and y, and then the output that we're using for the codomain, the real number in the codomain, we'll call that z, right? So we'll have some formula, f of x, y equals z. Or or you could turn it around the other way and write you know, z equals f of x, y, right? Which is, this is kind of consistent how we represent graphs in two dimensions, right? We always write y equals f of x, right? It's kind of the same thing, just more variables, right? z is now the output, x and y are both inputs, right? So it's very similar to the y equals f of x notation. Which is z is now the output, and x and y are the inputs. So, so this is the the most common way of, of representing these. Um, so let's let's look at an, at an example of that. Let's look at here's a, a nice little example. Um, let's take the surface um, given by say I had z equals let's say I have the square root of let's do one minus um, let's do four x squared minus y squared, right? Say this is our our function, right? So so this see this right here, this is the f of x y. That's what f of x y means. It means just some formula in terms of x and y, right? Um, so that's what we're representing there. So that's the f. Um, and now let's say let's graph it, right? So let's let's graph it. Okay. So we have some things to to think about here on the, on the graph. Um, what do I want when I say the graph? I want to plot all points x comma y comma f of x y, right? Because that's what we're specifying here. The z coordinate is given by this formula f of x y. So I want to plot all points x comma y comma f of x y for where x and y. Um, are in the domain of f, where d is the domain of of f, right? And if we're if we're being more careful, right up here, when I said that f goes from r squared to um, r, it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be defined on all of r squared, right? You could say or you know some domain that's a subset of r squared. You could have places where a function is undefined, just like, just like in you know pre-calc when you're looking at y equals f of x, 
all the time you have domain issues, right? Usually it's not defined on the whole real number line. There's There are often places where you have division by zero, square root of a negative, log of a negative, right? Log of zero. So lots of things can go wrong in, in function land, right? Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> let's see if we can get some sense of this, right? Um, so first, let's see if we could find D, right? Can we find the domain? So that'll be our first mission here, right? If I'm going to plot all these points, let's just ask ourselves, what is the domain of this function? Well, you, you kind of want that mindset of just what can go wrong, right? Um, if you look at the formula and you're like, oh, nothing can go wrong here. You know, if the formula was like, say, you know, this or something, right? Then the domain would just be all real numbers because you look at that, you say, oh, well, I can take any real number x, square it, add it to two, add it to some other real number y. Nothing can go wrong. So the right there, you would just there's not there's nothing really to do. You just say, oh, everything, all pairs are all pairs of real numbers, right? The whole plane r r squared. Um, but here, something can go wrong, right? What can go wrong here? Well, in this formula, how could I fail to produce a valid output? How could I fail to produce a real number, right? In this particular formula, right, what do I need? I need what's under the root I need that to be positive, right? Or well, it could be zero. It must be non-negative, right? If I otherwise I have square root of a negative number and I get a uh, something in terms of i instead of a real, right? So here I, I have to have a non-negative quantity there. So let's let's solve that, right? Let's let's write that down and then we'll get a sense of the domain of this surface, right? So solve one minus four x squared minus y squared equals zero, uh, greater than or equal to zero. Um, and you know how you solve this depends entirely on what you're what you're given. Um, in this case, I would just you know you kind of here I would just kind of work on the inequality until it becomes recognizable. So here, use a little bit of algebra to rewrite it. And you'll see this is equivalent to 4x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1. All right. So now what, what is this? Well, this is, what does that determine in the xy plane? So, so I, here, I'm not going to think about z for a second, right? I'm just thinking of x and y in this formula. Um, so, so what is what does this give us? This is the um, interior and boundary, right? The boundary of an ellipse, right? Because if you think about if that were equality, four x squared plus y squared equals one, that would be the boundary of an ellipse, right? This is one of our favorite conic sections, and if you um, then make it less than instead of equal, then it, then it includes what's inside the ellipse, right? So this now gives us the domain of this, right? Um, and specifically, you could say what the axes are on this ellipse too, right? What's the, um, what are we gonna get for the axes here? You're gonna get a uh, major, major axis from, um, 0 minus 1 to 0, 1, right? And how am I getting that? I'm just saying, OK, well, 1 or minus. If you pick, just pick one number to be 0 and see what the other one is, right? If x is 0, then how would I get to the top or bottom of the ellipse? I would use y equals 1 or minus 1, right? Um, and what would the minor axis be? Um, now you do the same thing, but set y equal to 0, right? And when you set y equal to zero, you get that x has to be a half, right? Because you have four x squared equals one. So x would have to be a half or or negative one half. So there we go. So there's our um, there is our ellipse that we're working with, right? So this is the this is gonna be the domain of our function. So it's so this domain is just a region in the xy plane. Right, it goes out one half this way and out negative one half this way. It goes up one and down minus one 
And this ellipse right here, right, that's our, that's going to be our, not just the boundary of it, but the this filled in region, right? That's going to be our domain D, right? Is that that region there, that two-dimensional region? So here, again, I haven't plotted any Z coordinates yet at all, right? Um, all I've done so far is decide what pairs of X and Y are valid, right? And so that's that's what we found. We found that the domain of this function is just the set of all um, x, y in the plane such that 4x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. That's our, that's our domain. Right? And, I, and we graphed it here. Right? So what it means is when we graph this surface, um, one nice way to think of it is um, this surface will be empty outside of that ellipse. When you're, when you're here in 3D, right? So in, in R3, what's the, what is this going to look like? We haven't said what the Z coordinates are going to look like at all, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to start with exactly this ellipse, right? We're going to start with this ellipse D down, which is sitting down here in the X, Y plane. Right, so this is that that same ellipse D, right, sitting down here in the x y plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to take every point. I mean, we're ourselves not going to do this by hand, but mathematically, what we're going to do is we're going to take every point, every x comma y, um, in this region. So we're going to pick, you know, every pair x y, and we're going to plug it into the function. And then that function is going to tell us from that x, y, what z coordinate to give it. And we're going to plot a point called x, y, f of x, comma, y. And together, all of those points, doing that for every x, comma, y in d, that's going to give us the graph of our surface. Right. So that's that's what we're looking at here. Um, right. So that's what we want to do in, in R3, right? We're going to choose... Um, every x, y, and z, sorry, in d, right? And plug those x, that pair x, y, into f, right? To calculate the corresponding z coordinate. And then we're gonna plot all of those points uh, and that's what we call the, the graph of our surface. Okay, <clears throat> so out here, for example, you know, if you're outside D, this is just going to be empty, right? The the point, if you have a an X, Y outside of D, there will not be any point on the surface out there, right? Um, another way to think of this, I think a nice way to think of this is, if you took your, you know, our surface is going to be, because I have some height here in 3D, um, but if you take it and you just stamped your surface flat, right, you just drop a, a real heavy book on it, um, right, then it would turn into D. It would turn exactly into this domain D, right? Um, or you imagine if you shined a light on it and the light was pointing straight down, the light is up there at, at height infinity, at Z equals infinity, shining straight down. And... Um, if you do that, then D would be the shadow that your surface would cast onto the XY plane. That's another another perfectly good way to think of the, the domain. Okay, there we go. So this is our, um, this is, we haven't actually plotted any points yet, right? This is all just talking about domain, but now we're ready. Now we know at least what points we're supposed to be plotting. So let's proceed. Right. So let's now just choose some points in D and um and let's graph them right so i'm going to draw a bigger bigger version of this um and i'm going to calculate their corresponding z values and we're gonna we're gonna plot those points right so let's do that's right here. We're going to write x, y, 
and f of x, y. And this, you know, this might be a little bit tedious, yes, but it's but when you're just getting into surfaces, it's it's definitely worth doing this by hand a little bit just to see what the heck is going on um, before you start talking about fancier things, partial derivatives and, and all that. So um, which is coming soon, but you know, for, first let's just get a good grasp of what exactly these surfaces are. So here's that's just a magnified version of what we were dealing with before. A little more, a little more to scale. There we go. So let's now pick some important points to get a sense of what the graph is doing. So here, right, what do I have on this? I have um, the point one half comma zero, right? Comma, I don't know yet, right? I know I'm gonna use one half and zero, but I don't know yet what that point will be, right? So let's, I'm gonna start there, one half zero. And now I'm gonna calculate in here, I'm gonna do one minus, I'm gonna use um, one half for X, right? And I'm gonna use zero for Y. So I'm just using that formula for F. Okay, well, when you grind that out, you get zero, right? So that's the point I wanna plot there is Z equals zero. So that's actually in the X, Y plane, right? Another point, that point, one half zero, zero. Um, and then I have the same thing is gonna happen by symmetry at negative one half because I'm gonna square that number anyway so it doesn't affect this calculation at all if I flip the sign, right? So this is also zero. So I get a corresponding point over there, negative one half zero comma zero. Then I can do zero comma one and um, zero comma minus one. These for the same reason are gonna be zero, right? These, I guess, were negatives technically. Not that it matters, right? There is, in the formula, there's a minus, so let's write the minus. Um, it doesn't affect the value, of course. So, okay, so there's our, right, for the same reason. Um, I flip the sign, it still gets zero. So there, so now I've calculated this at all the vertices, right? They just, why did I pick the vertices? Well, you know, just they're just sort of special points geometrically. So let's, let's calculate those. Um, There we go. So now what is what is going on here? Um, if you notice, essentially what we have is anytime you're on the boundary of the ellipse, we're gonna get a zero for our z coordinate, right? If because if think about it this way, if if 4x squared plus y squared equals one, then square root of one minus four X squared plus Y squared. See, we just said this thing is one. So then this would be zero, right? So we actually know all the points on this boundary, they're all gonna have Z coordinate zero, right? I'm just gonna have an ellipse at height Z equals zero. So, you know, if you pick something else on that boundary, right, you're gonna still get a, a point of height zero, just like the vertices, right? Um, and it could be an uglier, Point. You know, if you pick something uglier on the ellipse, like let's pick something uglier on the ellipse. Let's say, say y was one half, right? So if y was one half, then what would x have to be to get one, right? For example, um, let's see, what would that be? You'd have 4x squared. Um, here, right? So let's, let's just do this on the little side calculation. This isn't really, whoa, no, no. Okay, we just need to start over. Let's, so let's let's do some scratch on the side here, right? Say say y were one half. Let's try that again. Um, so if y were one half, then we have um, three fourths over there. So x so four x squared has to equal three fourths. So x would have to equal three over sixteen. Sorry, x squared. So then x could be plus or minus square root of three over four. There we go. Right. So th so that would be. For example, this point, root three over four, comma, one half, or this point, negative root three over four, comma, one half, right? Those would both be points that are again on the boundary of the ellipse, right? 
in the xy plane. Right. So then in here, see, I know I'm going to get one minus one when I do that calculation. I'm going to get one minus one when I do that calculation. I'm going to get zero. Right. So that's this point, this root three over four, one half, zero. And out here, I'd have negative root three over four, one half, and zero. All right. Those are those two points that we just calculated. And you could, right, you could do that for any point on the boundary of this helix. Okay, let's look for some things now that don't just have zero as their um, as their z value. So it's honestly it's a little bit difficult to um, do much more at this point than just pick some values, right? So let's just pick some clean values, like say the origin. That's a, an important point, right? So let's see, what do I get at the origin? I get one minus zero minus zero is one. Okay, beautiful. So there's there's a point right here. I'd have 0 comma 0 comma 1. Right, there's a there's a point. Um, let's pick something else. Let's pick, how about 0 comma 1 half? Right. I'd have 1 minus 0 minus 1 half squared. So I'd get the square root of 3 fourths. So I'd get root 3 over 2. Right. So there's another point. There's, I'm going to, Suppress this label so we can see this point, new point that we just calculated. So here, what's the um, the x y point that I'm starting with? Is this right here? Right, is zero comma one half, it's zero on the x and one half on the y. Now you're going to come up to root three over two, right? So up, you know, up here, right? So this is going to be um, this is going to be zero comma one half comma root three over two. And, and again, it's not too hard to see on the other side, the same thing is going to happen, right? You're going to have this symmetry, right? So you'll get another point over here with the same coordinates, just the negative y, right? Um, so you can kind of see what's, what's happening here on this graph, right? Basically, this is going to be the max because 0, 0 is how you minimize the part that's being subtracted under the root. So you can think of this as, oh my God, I keep erasing that, there we go. So you can think of this as, you know, it's going to be some arc that goes up to the max. And then the other way too, you're going to have some arc that goes up to the max and then down to, back down to the axes, right? So it's some little hill, some little bumpy hill look at thing, right? Nice, that's nice, right? So we have some idea of what the graph looks like, but it's maybe not the most precise thing in the world, right? Um, but at least even just plugging in points, you get you do get a visual of it, right? You get a you get a visual. Um, <clears throat> so what can we do to make it a little more precise? Well, this is where the notion of cross sections and contour plots. This is that's where this comes in. So here's what helps a lot is understand if you're not quite sure what a surface um, looks like. Try to understand a surface via um, looking at cross sections, which what that means is um, intersect it with planes, right? Intersections with planes. And in particular, pick really nice planes, right? Um, so for example, in this one, you know what I want to look at? I want to look like we, I drew this little arc here, right? This was a cute little arc that I drew. But what exactly is that arc? Well, it that arc, I was really representing all the points that have x equal to 0. OK, so well, let's just figure out what that is, right? So for example, in our example, let's figure out exactly what that is, right? The cross section of the surface, x equals 0. Right, what's the x equals zero cross section of this surface? The x equals zero cross section means take this formula, z equals root one minus four x squared minus y squared, is what? Well, take it and plug in literally x equals zero, right? And then what do you get? We get that this is. Um, z equals root 1 minus y squared. Ah, this is the top half of a unit circle, 
right? In the YZ plane, right? See, because I set X equal to zero, which is the literally the YZ plane, right? So now, see, now this isn't now this little thing that I drew here isn't just some random arc anymore. I mean, it kind of was just a random arc of how I drew it, but in our minds now we have way more sense of what that is. Ah, that's the top. That little arc is the top half of a unit circle, right? And you could even figure out other similar arcs. Like, say I want this arc here that connects those points, the ones that we had um, the x coordinate root 3 over 4. And then on this side, we had x coordinate negative root 3. Uh, wait, what? What am I doing? Oh my god. Sorry, other way. X equals zero. Sorry, the YZ plane. I said everything I wrote and said was correct. I just didn't label my diagram correctly. Here, let's let's do this again. X equals zero is the YZ plane, but I didn't actually draw it in the YZ plane. This here we go. This arc here. This arc. Right from this point to this point, that arc is the top half of the unit circle. That's where I wanted to. All our calculation was correct. This this was all fine. The I just didn't I just didn't point the arrow to the right arc. This is the top half of the unit circle in the YZ plane. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. There we go. But now now I want a different. Arc. Now I want to pick. Here we go. I want to do this this green arc, right? So I wanna do the arc that connects, I wanna say, what is the arc connecting um, the point um, negative root three over four comma one half comma zero to the point root three over four comma one half comma zero. Let's look at that arc, right? What would that arc be? <clears throat> See, flipping uh, YZ plane for the XZ plane means taking on a sip of coffee. That's what that means. Parent of young child, drink more coffee. Um, so this is our, um, this is the arc that we, uh, that we want to get an equation for, right? To understand it better. Because what is it? Is it a, downward facing parabola? Is it half a circle? Is it half an ellipse? Is it a arc of a hyperbola? Is it a bump of a um, of a cosine graph? Is it, you know, a top hat, right? Is it none of the above? Is it just some arc that we haven't met yet, right? So that's what I want to understand. So, so let's get a nice description of this. How can I get a nice description of this? Well, this lives in what plane? It lives in the plane y equals one half right? You can imagine taking a plane that's parallel to the XZ plane, but translate it one half of a unit along the Y axis, right? That's the plane Y equals one half. So where that plane meets your, this little surface, that will be, that will give us that arc, right? So now we can, we can do that, right? This is a cross section for y equals one half, right? And what is it? Well, let's calculate. So I get, what do I get? I get z equals square root of one minus four x squared minus one half squared, right? And let's let's work on this a little bit. What is this? This is z equals square root of one minus four x squared minus a fourth, right? So this becomes three fourths minus four x squared. Um, and this, what is this? This is the top half uh, of an ellipse, right? Um, why is it the top half of an ellipse? Well, because if you keep going, right, you could square both sides. And now in this form, now it's pretty clear it's an ellipse, right? What is the equation of an ellipse? It's a it's the equation of a circle where the coefficients don't match, right? It's just the circle that got stretched in one variable. So it's an ellipse. Um, 
that's running parallel to the xz plane, right? So, um, so that's that's now we know that this arc is actually an elliptical arc, right? It's it's half it's half of an ellipse that arc. Right? If you want, you can calculate the axes and all that jazz. So, all right, because we have an equation for it, right? So, um, so this is this is working quite nicely. Um, now, those were examples of a cross section where we set. Um, first, we did x equals a constant. Then we did y equals a constant. The most special, most desired cross sections in this context typically are what are called level curves, right? So level curves are cross sections of the form z equals a constant, right? These end up being the most important types of cross sections, I would say, for our, for our surfaces, z equals a constant. Um, and what you do with level curves is um, that you can do them exactly the same way that we've been considering them here, right? So say I wanted to talk about the, um, we actually already found one level curve, right? So in our example, um, the Z, we didn't call it a level curve, but we argued for a level curve. We said Z equals zero level curve, which is a type of cross section. So you could say the Z equals zero cross section, or you could say the Z equals zero level curve means the same thing. So the Z equals zero level curve um, is the ellipse for X squared plus Y squared equals one, right? So, so that would be saying that here, right? The Z equals zero level curve in the XY plane gives us just this, this elliptical boundary that we drew, um, just the border of D really, right? Okay, but then you can ask for other level curves, like what happens up here, say at Z equals one half, right? It sure looks like a smaller ellipse, right? Well, you can calculate an equation for that ellipse if you want by just plugging in Z equals one half, right? That you know, say z equals one half. What would this be? This would be, would be one half equals. Just plug it into the the formula, just like we did for the x and the y level curve, right? So what do you get? You get um, when you square both sides. You get a fourth equals one minus four x squared minus y squared. So we get four x squared plus y squared um, equals three fourths, right? So again, you could leave it there and just say, hey, it's an ellipse. Or if you want to be more precise about it, you can then start saying, okay, this is what? This is, you know, this is y squared over 3 fourths. And put this one over, <clears throat> over 3 fourths as well. This becomes, what is it, 3 sixteenths down there? Um, yeah, right. And then, so then you can write it as x squared over root three over four squared plus y squared over um, root three over two squared. And there we go. Now we have the measurements of the semi and semi major and semi minor axes, right? The the a and the b that you know now exactly how wide and how tall this ellipse is. Right? So this would be the the ellipse that corresponds to z equals one half cross section, right? So that's this ellipse that I drew up here at z equals one half, right? This ellipse there, right? That's gonna be a, that's gonna be given by this equation, right? By x squared over root three over four squared plus y squared over root three over two squared equals one. That's the equation of that ellipse. Um, a very fun cross section here is the z equals one cross section, right? You can almost see it from our graph here. It should just be a dot, right? It's imagine the plane z equals one. It the, it only touches the surface at just one point, right? Um, so and sure enough, right? Z, let's try it. So z equals one, right? The cross section for z equals one um, is what is one equals root one minus 4x squared minus y squared. So this becomes 
one you can square both sides and when you square both sides then you can actually cancel the ones so you get 4x squared plus y squared equals zero but now i have two non-negative quantities whose sum is zero right x squared can never be negative 4x squared can never be negative y squared can never be negative so i can't have those two terms cancel each other out that one of them was positive and one of them is negative to become zero no it has to be the only possibility is that both are zero right the sum of squares equaling zero means each of those terms was zero so that's why you have just that one dot right at z equals one so the level curve for z equals one is just that point zero zero one just the dot right it's not an equation it's just the dot um <clears throat> you can even say here's another fun cross section so the cross section um for z equals two just looking from our picture here z equals two would be like you know way up here um, it doesn't seem like our surface ever touches it right so it better come up empty um and it will, right? If you do this, you get 2 equals root 1 minus 4x squared minus y squared. Um, square both sides. And you're going to get that 4x squared plus y squared equals negative 3, right? Do a little algebra. That's what we're going to get. So now I have a sum of squares is negative, right? So this means that x and why you know you you if you want you could find them in the complex numbers right but um not in reals right you can't you can't find sums of squares that add to negative numbers in the reals right so so that's why this is empty right you'd get a an empty cross section at z equals two so all right putting all of this together um the collection of all level curves for the surface graphed in the xy plane is called the contour plot. Um, this is something that you'll see in lots of contexts. Um, but here it is in, in our particular context. Come on, symmetry. Come on, symmetry. Close it up. Um, all right, so the um, this is, you know, that boundary, right? That's the boundary of D. That was our Z equals zero level curve. So you can label it just near it, or sometimes you'll even see the label drawn, like, kind of in the middle of the level curve to really let you know which one you're on. Um, so we calculated that ellipse. We calculated the z equals one half level curve, right? So we'll draw that. We'll label that one. Right, and that was kind of like this. Right, that was the that was the one with this equation, right? That's the equation I'm graphing there. And then we had the, you can't really draw it in the middle for z equals one. You have to kind of put the label to the side there, right? Z equals one, it's just that dot, right? Z equals two, I'm not gonna label anything with z equals two on this contour plot because, well, there, it was empty. There were no points on the z equals two level curve, right? So you don't need to include labels for, for z values that never got used. Um, and if you want, you know, you could include more level curves, like you could calculate you know, a z equals one fourth level curve, and that would end up being some ellipse in here. Or you could calculate a z equals three fourths level curve, and that would give you some ellipse in here, right? Um, so you could keep this going as much as you want. Um, these you've likely seen in different contexts. Um, these contour plots, if you ever look at a topographical map, this is exactly what gets used. Um, where z just represents the height of the terrain right um if you ever look at weather maps they use these all the time right 
Often Z represents pressure there. If you're trying to show like a high pressure system, low pressure system, um, that these level curves there represent isobars, right? Um, you know, point the sort of curves along which the atmospheric pressure is equal. So topo maps, weather maps, right? You'll see these level curves all the time. They're very popular ways to represent data. So, okay, great. So there's our example of our surface. Right, uh, or um, not just the graph of a surface, but also how to understand it via cross sections, um, how to do level curves where those cross sections are of the form z equals a constant, um, and how to build the contour plot. Cool. Hope you enjoyed.